Hello and welcome to the Is It Fast podcast. I'm your host, Team Albus Daily. Joining me today is another in a number of unique guests who have all recently competed together in the same off-road race, Rally Jamil. For those that don't know, this is an all-female rally that takes place once a year in the heart of Saudi Arabia and encourages women from all walks of life, not just racing, to come and try their hand at motorsport. Saz Gulani is one of those individuals, and as someone from Iraq, has a very different story for how she got involved in motorsport. We talked about this, where people outside of racing may know her from, she's quite a big deal, what the rally was like from her perspective, how much this opportunity meant to her, and much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, Saz. Thank you very much for being here today. First of all, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for this interview. No, my pleasure. And I'm, I'm very good as well. Thank you. And you're someone who I'm very interested to talk to because people that do not know you, motorsport is a part of your life, but isn't necessarily the main aspect of it. So I'm thinking you might have a different answer to the question I ask everyone, which is, what first got you interested in motorsport? Um, I've, I'll be honest, I've always loved driving. I've always loved driving cars and I've always had interesting cars. And this is in my country and to many people, let's be honest, this is odd because usually it's men have to like cars. Men yeah. love driving, you know? And I've always had this passion in me, but people were just like, mm, no, they were not taking me seriously. And then, Last year, I hear about something. There's uh, this uh, rally that's only for women. And I was like, oh, my God, I think I want to do that. Let me see. Maybe it's a yes. I inside of me, I feel like I have a fashion for for uh, driving and for cars. But let me put it to test if I'm actually good, if what I think I am good at, if I'm actually good at. So that's how I I heard about Riley Jamie and that's how I started. Yeah, and the, the rally itself, like you say, it's kind of brought together this interesting concoction of people from all over the place. And like you say, with your background, with your country, it's not necessarily assumed that you would be so passionate about this in the first place. Was it something that you just, just clicked when you were younger and you just thought, I really like this? Or was it the first time you got in a car it just felt right? Or what was it that gave you that, that itch? Uh not really, not from my childhood, no. I just feel like it was something... Back there in my mind, I just knew I have a, like I said, I have a passion for driving and I love cars and yeah, and I think that's about it, to be honest, but I never actually knew how passionate I am until I did it, until I did the rally. So it was just there, something in my mind that I knew I, I, knew I have passion for and that's it. And I'm I think it's about... not just in my country, I feel like around the world, when it comes to cars and driving, everyone just thinks of men. Hmm. And... um women doing that and women doing a only woman rally was just the idea not just that that it, i had passion for it the idea of all women doing the rally was just mind-blowing for me i was like i have to be a part of this i'm going to skip ahead slightly then because while i'm going to ask you about the rally you've hit on a note that i want to follow up on now is that how important do you think an event like this is, especially with it being held in Saudi Arabia and then obviously that, that represents for the, the region as a whole? Yeah, uh, I think uh, we might all know that in the last few years that women started driving in Saudi Arabia, which was uh, um, a great thing, a great improvement. But now having so many women around the world doing rally in Saudi Arabia is just amazing and uh, not just for the women there for us too because it, Saudi Arabia is giving us also an opportunity to participate in such rally so I feel like it's an amazing thing that we have a rally for all women even if it's not for all women it's there's a rally that women can participate in Saudi Arabia and I thank them for that have you seen what they've done there um, like you say, it's given you an opportunity to go and do a rally in this instance. Do you yeah. see that as kind of having a trickle down effect to other places as well? I mean, you're more familiar with uh, the region than I probably am um, on kind of like a personal level. Do you see that influencing more women getting interested in that, even if they not necessarily compete? There's more conversation about it, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. I feel like uh, there's actually like effect and uh, um 
affects all other women and other countries to do the same thing and for other women to be uh, like to to want to participate and not necessarily having them having a passion for like driving or want to race or do rallies for the rest of their lives and do it as their main job but just you know give it in a try right. just as a yeah. fun experience in their lives yeah definitely that's that's one thing that from other competitors yeah. from this rally in particular uh of other competitors mm -hmm. I've, I've spoken to they've said this it's been like well I always liked the idea of it, but I never really knew when or how I would have the opportunity to do it. And then this suddenly comes on the radar yes. and like, well, why not? Yeah, same. <laughs> exactly. That's so true. It was the same with me. So tell me about the race then from your perspective. I want to know everything. Did you have a favorite moment? What was the most challenging aspect of it? Was it everything you wanted it to be? Yeah, so I'm going to start from the beginning that last year when I knew about Rally, um, Jamil and I am um, like women right advocate. I was like, I have to because it's all women. I mean, it's cars and these are two things I am like I, I, I'm I uh, advocate for. And I it was very interesting to me, the idea. So I was like, let me give it a try. But to be honest, I didn't think that. I thought it's, it will be just a one-time thing. And I go and I participate in the rally. It's my first time ever participating in, in such thing. And the the feeling I had while driving and competing with all these amazing, strong women, like all over the world, and these amazing and strong women from Saudi Arabia that just in the past few years, they started driving down and they're just good, was just, it was amazing. The feeling was amazing. And then um, this year, when I I, I knew they're gonna do um, Rally Jamil again, I was like, I have to participate. And the challenge for me was that I am very new to this, and there are we had women with us that they this is what they do in their daily life. You know, this is their that job. Was, that was something their a few other people said. It's like this feels like a great thing, and then you realize some of the competition. Like, oh my yeah. god, am I in the right place? <laughs> Exactly. I'm like, oh my God, am I in the right place? I just started this. Last year when I participated, to be honest, I had no idea about anything, you know? I was just driving, following the rules, that's it. But this year for me was different. I went with the mindset, you know what, Saz? Yes, you're new to this. Yes, you have amazing competitions with Dania Aqil to Maha to many other like great competitors. But you're going to do this because you have passion for it. And I have a very competitive mind and I'm a very competitive person. I was like, I'm going to do this. Perfect. So going there, having this big competition with these amazing, like strong women who does rally for the life. First day comes, I get number seven. Second day comes, I get number four. Third day comes, I get number one. First place. And I'm like, you know what? Were you more surprised with the other people? <laughs> to be honest i was surprised i was doing my best that's what we were doing during the rally like at that time when you do the rally you don't really think about oh my god number one number one i you just do your best like for your co-driver to be safe for yourself to be safe and for everything to go as smooth as possible and everything to be good you know mm -hmm. but you do your best and for me that was the challenge having so many other great strong and and um, talented women with me and being able to actually get very good positions was the biggest challenge and that also the challenge was driving on sand and on those rocky mountains like i cannot tell you how different that is from driving just <laughs> normally first time last year when i i drove on sand and i was like the car was like Boo. and i was like what is going on is this like am i driving what is this you know it was very different but i think after rally jamie i don't even want to drive normal like on normal roads anymore <laughs> Because that's how interesting and then that's, yeah, that, that's how amazing it was. And if there's something I didn't talk about, you asking your question, <laughs> tell me so that. Oh, no, I mean, there's plenty within what you said that I could go into there. And part of it is that um, despite your competitive nature and obviously wanting to do well and try your best, do you think that part of the reason you did so well is because you were just focused on doing your best and making sure that you got out of that, not thinking, I've got to get P3 today. I've got to go for P1 this next day and this sort of thing. And it was just because you were trying to make sure everything went smoothly. Because I think a lot of the time when people do a rally the first time, they just want to not have an accident or just think I can drive this and it goes smoothly. No punctures. Let's yeah. just have a nice time. Do you think that yeah. kind of 
helped you take the pressure off yourself in some way in terms of your competitive nature was was there but it wasn't overwhelming yeah I think I um because of my like other job and because of my experience in life I feel like I have found a balance between having the pressure of oh Sas you need to be number one Sas you need to do good not necessarily number one but Sas you need to do good and be safe and also enjoy the moment yeah. Because I mean the rally, like it, you enjoy every moment of it from the normal times to the very challenging danger. One, two, three. T- so it was, I had, I tried to balance. Okay, we're not perfect, but I tried to balance between me wanting to get very good positions to enjoy the moments as just, just try to be safe. No accidents. You have someone else with you in the car. It's not just you. And maybe if you have an accident, other cars will, you know, affect other cars too. So I was trying to balance between my my competitive nature that I want to do good and also to be safe and enjoy the mm-hmm. moment too, you know? Yeah. No, definitely. And um, I'm curious, this whole, there's so much going on in that, I feel like. And I want to know, was, was there a moment during the rally where you didn't necessarily have like an out-of-body experience, but you kind of saw everything a bit more clear and like a how did i get here and b this is quite a, a special thing was that that moment where you kind of stood back and appreciated the fact that somehow you were there and you were doing well and you were actually doing what you've been wanting to do for a long time that's a that's a very interesting question because i think i've had that realization so many of the moments but i never thought about it just now that you asked me that question i'm like yes actually some of the moments when i'm driving and i i feel like me and my co-driver you know we're doing good and i am driving on this beautiful desert and i see all around me like camels and these beautiful mountains and i'm in a rally something i'm passionate about and so i was like oh my god i i did it i think you know so yeah, I'm also curious, did you know your co-driver before the rally, or was this the first time that you'd met? And if so, either way, actually, what was the dynamic like between you two? Because obviously co-driver, driver, pretty important to have a good relationship, at least inside the car. Yeah, um, I didn't really uh, know my co-driver before. Um, last year, I had another co-driver, and then this year, I was... Uh, sent uh, some CVs and then I chose one based off the amazing CV to be honest that she had and uh, her name is uh, Anisel she's from Sweden and I I looked at her CV and I was like oh my god Mm, like she's amazing she has been a driver and a co-driver and she coaches like new drivers and like I said I am new to this Um, so I wanted someone with me who has experience who I can learn from because I'm always like this even if I'm not new to this no matter how much I know about something there's always room to learn more you know and I was like I if I have a very experienced uh, person with me I can learn a lot and to be honest I did and the dynamic between me and her like um it was amazing. Like we were such a good team and that is very important. Like uh, you have no idea how much I, I talk about how important it is for the team to be good together in a rally. It's like, because if you don't get along, if you don't communicate well, many things can go wrong, you know, but we had such clear communication and we were, we had, such a good energy between me and her that 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 made it to be honest possible for everything to go smooth and for us to get good positions i suppose for her as well it was the perfect challenge of having to work with someone relatively new to this whole game of like oh i get to test how much i know in this instance and see how i can make the best of it with someone new to see am i as good at this as i think i am and it turns out yes yes she is um Yes, and definitely. you kind of got that with the driving them. So that makes you, I assume, feel reassured, and you know you can trust the person next to you, even though a week beforehand, maybe you've not even met the person in real life. You've kind of you've seen a exactly. CV, but that's it. Yeah, exactly. But before um, we get to Saudi Arabia, to be honest, I try to like talk to her with messages and stuff, but that's not enough to know a person. Few it's messages, never quite the real thing. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. But like I said, I think we were. Um, a great team 
And I didn't think that's possible because like you say, you come from two different backgrounds, two different countries, everything is new. And in a competition that there is a lot of pressure and sometimes that usually takes out the best or the worst in you. So yeah. you have like, maybe in a competition, you know, a diff you will see a different side of me. That's not like the size you see in the mm. other times or in normal life and having that pressure and in a rally like that and getting along together i think it was great and i cannot wait to have more challenges with her and to do more rallies with her well you've kind of read my mind a little bit there in some ways because i was going to ask you've done it once now do you want to do it again next year and as part of that do you maybe you've not thought about this but do you maybe see yourself as a role model for other women as well now because of not having that traditional racing background and coming in enjoying it so much and finding a co-driver to work with that you've gone with so well and kind of showing that what it may not happen perfectly every time you can get this really nice blend and it should encourage other people that are unsure maybe yeah. that you can do it yeah um i definitely want to participate next year and that's a definite thing <laughs> and last year i want to be top three in the end you know the general one mm -hmm. and i will hopefully but <laughs> even besides rally jamil i think i want to participate in other rallies too because this year just told me that i can do it and i it's not just a passion or something in me i can actually do good that's why i want to practice more and i want to participate um more in rallies and for me to see myself as a role model to other girls and women, I would say, no, I want them to see me as a role model, not me thinking I am a role yeah. model to them. If you understand my point. I understand you know? what you mean. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I actually get a lot of messages that makes me the happiest that they say that you are my role model. You taught me as a woman that anything I put my mind to, I can do, you know? And that makes me the happiest for them to see me as a role model, not for me to see myself as a role model. I get what you mean there, yeah. It's, it's a fine distinction, but I get you. Um, yeah. And then one other question on, on the Reddit. So who would you like to see enter it next year? I mean, maybe you've got some names that I won't be familiar with, but are there really people? Because again, this is a rally that, like we were saying, people from all over the world in terms of backgrounds and not yeah. traditional race backgrounds so is there anyone you're thinking i want to see you there next year someone who has already participated or someone who hasn't someone new someone new i mm, <laughs> that's an interesting question i think from the girls that we already have in the rally mm -hmm. because that's I don't know who should I think about like seeing her in the rally. I mean, I hope I see more Kurdish and Iraqi girls participating, to be honest. That's that's something I want to see. But someone I want to have in the rally with me so that I have this competition side, Dani mm -hmm. Akri, definitely, because she's amazing. <laughs> yeah, she she's she's very, very talented. And I think having her in the race will make me do better if you understand my yeah. point because i would be like you know what she's amazing she's doing great like let me try to compete with that is you know so yeah, it makes sense and she's, again, she's my one of these drivers my got this very, mind. Yeah. She, she's one of these drivers got this very calm but um collected manner about it that you feel like she's very nice but you wouldn't want to necessarily be up against her on in a race because you know that when the helmet comes on you're in a bit of trouble perhaps um, yeah yeah <laughs> And that's and the that type of woman that I that inspires me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It did, did make me want to ask, actually, as well. Um, one of the, the other competitors mentioned that there was this nice feeling of camaraderie between everyone as well in terms of while you had all these experienced drivers there and the, you had the, the new people coming in and learning, if you had something yeah. that you wanted to ask someone else or get a bit of advice or this or that, everyone was quite open and friendly about it. Did you have that same experience? That's so true. That's so true. To be honest, everyone was like, yes, this is a competition. But at the same time, I, I saw this bond between the girls. I, I saw this love and positive energy between the girls that I've, I haven't experienced elsewhere. Because you have these experienced drivers that they, because this is a competition, they want to win. They can be like, no, I don't want to share information. But then you have 
these uh, new drivers, new people to rally and them coming together and be like, oh, I have a question about this. I don't know this. And them opening up and sharing as much information to be as useful as possible was just amazing to me. Because, again, if you think about it, this is a competition. They can be like, no, we're mm -hmm. competing against each other. I can, you know what, this is a this is a secret of my driving or how I win. I cannot share. But they actually, everyone was so helpful. Everyone was helping each other in a way that you, it was inspired. It was very inspiring. And perhaps for even them me, when I had questions, I would ask a question, and everyone would be like, "Do this, do that, don't do this." This is, you know, and it was amazing. I am, I am thankful for them. Perhaps for them as well. On on some level, there's this element of, I can give them this information, see how well they apply it, and if they do well with it, that makes them feel good because they've been able to help out. But also, if they then also beat you, they think. I've made the I've made the field a bit more level in terms of the competition, and it gives them that yeah. extra competitive edge of like I could still go up against yes. it even if I'm telling them my trade secrets. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. One so... last question I wanted to ask you as well, just on a personal note of curiosity, is that away from rallying, as you've you've hinted at, and for people who don't know, you're a TV host, and I'm curious about what led you into this area of life and how you became this. I became a TV host ten years ago. And it's a long time. I was just a student, um, like studying business management. It has it had nothing to do with TV or media or anything. And I got a got a call from a friend who, like, long story short, I ended up just watching a couple of women doing a test for a show. And then there was some, there was a break, and I was like, you know what? There's a break. Everyone is resting. I will do like. I will go on the stage just for acting, you know, just for, yeah. and I go on there, like when I come in, everyone should like clap and we're going to do this and that. And after two days, I get a call from the manager of the uh, TV. They're like, we want you like out of, there was 160 girls. I remember they're like, we want, and I was like, no, I am not for TV. I've never <laughs> sat in front of a camera. This is not for me. You know, I'm a student of mass business management. They're like, just give it a try. And what I remember, it was a three times a week, one hour and a half live show. That was for someone who's just started, like who has never sat in front of a camera. Ah, and I was a full time student. And I bet I, I remember I put my foot on that stage and I was like, oh, my God, I found what I love in life. Mm. And I was I, I I'm today to this day, I'm thankful because not everyone get to find what they love in life and do you know so i started and i that's how i became a tv host i have hosted many different shows and i um i ended up with having my own show with my own name that i made people's dreams come true which was the is it a bit odd for you sometimes to think of that this has happened that you don't quite believe it's real because like you say you kind of just tried something once and then or you know it, you've got a show with your own name on it. And I'm curious as well, actually, with the... I've just noticed a parallel with the with the rallying there. This is something where you all, you maybe had an inkling about it and you wanted to try it out, but you didn't think that you would love it maybe as much as you did and then look at what's happened on the TV side and now look what might be happening on the, on the rallying side. Exactly. So maybe the rally is like my, my show, you know, being a TV host, because I started not knowing how far I can go Mm -hmm. And I did. I ended up having my own show and making um, so many people's dreams come true and, and doing my best on TV. So maybe the rally is the same. I am just starting and I don't know my full potential yet. Maybe it's going, you know, I'm going to go back far. in 10 years hopefully. and see where you are. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully good places. <laughs> Well, it's yeah. been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, Saz, and I want to thank you very much for your thank time. You. And I am very much looking forward to seeing where you end up on the on the racing scene next. Because I think TV, we know yeah. for a little bit at least where you are, but on the rallying, that could be quite interesting. Yes, yes. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. We're gonna team me, uh, you're going to see me top three next year, I promise. <laughs> <laughs>
Details of where you can find both Saz and I on social media and everywhere else will be in the description of this episode, so do go and check that out. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again soon.